Thinking back to 2014, I didn't elaborate as much as I should have on how special Remington is for American paintings. We think of him with the sculptures um, and with the illustrations for Harper's and all the major magazines in New York in the late 19th and early 20th century. But what people don't realize about him was that he was a real New Yorker. He was born in upstate New York. He lived in Brooklyn. And then he lived in New Rochelle, where he had a studio for 18 years. So while he loved the West, and while early on, as early as 1881, he knew he wanted to be a Western illustrator and traveled often to the West, he always brought his drawings back and uh, his sketches and worked on them here. He started off as an illustrator and so knew how to listen to a story and ultimately how to tell a story. And I think that's what's so compelling about his paintings because they all tell a story. I also mentioned in 2014 that he wasn't particularly well trained. He didn't study a great deal. He didn't travel to Paris and study in France, but he studied at Yale at their College of Art and also at the, um, at the Art Students League in New York. Uh, so there was training, but where he got his legs was really with the illustration and with doing it over and over and over again. And then he just had a great eye. One of the aspects of this painting and of Remington's work in general, I think, is that there's a wonderful abstraction to his work, which attracts contemporary viewers as well as 19th century bands. This piece with its anonymous, mysterious background and this you know, stoic military figure Remington, in fact, was very in awe of his father, who had a military career in the Civil War. So I, you know, I think that kind of drama is evident in the piece and is irresistible to anyone looking at it.